Hi guys, so many of you have been asking me uh, to show real life UE traces, UE logs and uh, to show with a real drive test or post processing tool how we can uh, analyze them, how we can find information about them. So luckily I have gotten hold of some real 5G UE logs and uh, also I've gotten hold of a very powerful uh, post-processing tool which is uh, Sandwall's uh, Focus Analyzer. What I'll do is I'll put uh, details about this tool as well in the description so you guys if anyone of you wants to explore that you may do that. So uh, to start with uh, what we're going to do today is that we're going to use this tool and go through a 5G UE log and we're going to go through the level 3 messages which are the RRC messages and we're going to try to understand what we can get from the RRC messages we can try to see uh, what these how from from these messages how we can understand the whole network's configuration uh, how the UE goes through each message and traverses through these messages to find out uh, the network's configuration and how it attaches to the network as well and we'll also understand each message individually and what is its significance and we'll try to visualize it with the resource grid as well so uh, this is I think this has not been done before um, you if you go through this I think uh, you should be able to have a very good understanding about the 5g call flow signaling flow and network configuration and lots of other things as well so let's start uh, first let me just show you quickly how the tool works it's pretty simple if you have a log file you go to import log files from here you need to find out uh, which log file you have for instance this tool supports many log file formats uh, so right now I'm using this one and then you, here you put the name of the project you want to have this is uh, because we're going through some log files which has L3 RRC signaling so I just named it 5G standalone attached procedure then you can add the files here and start import once you do that you will get uh, your log file project over here and you will have your uh, all the information elements over here and uh, if you want to uh, if you want to check the RRC messages just right click here and click on show in message view and you will get the whole of this uh, resource grid that I'm seeing here so now having said that let's start and understand how this works out now when a UE is uh, trying to attach to 5G um, we're talking right now today we're talking about 5G standalone um, if you would if you want to do that what you're going to happen is that uh, UE needs to, to find out some of the major aspects so let's quickly look at them just to make sure that we understand what they are so for instance uh, this is our resource grid here we have uh, this one is the orange one is the PDCCH as you can see this one here these uh, light blue colors they are PDSCH the data uh, channel and uh, over here this one is the SSB which is called the synchronization signal block now what is that uh, the red one here is the PSS the primary sync signal this is the first signal the UE needs to uh, read to uh, get some synchronization after that it reads this yellow signal which is the secondary synchronization signal the SSS and then it reads this whole uh, purple channel which is the PBCH uh, physical broadcast channel and the PBCH itself carries the master information block or the MIB so the whole SSB block after reading the SSB block it gets the master information block which is the MIB and what does the MIB do this is the MIB uh, which we call BCH MIB and uh, inside the master information block we have some uh, typical information like system frame number and other stuff but the most important thing over here is this one PDCCH config sib one so what does it do it tells you a value of control resource set 0 now it, it, uh, it, is, it actually refers to a 3GPP table uh, that uh, if you look at that table I will also put that in the reference as well so that value of 10 indicates an, a resource block number offset from the SSB where SIV1 can be found so in simple words what happens here is that if you find out the MIB then the MIB will tell you the location of SIV1 here so SIV1 is over here for instance so with the help of this one you can actually find out the SIV1 now why we need the SIV1 uh, 
Now, SIV1 is very important because uh, SIV1 carries most of the information that we require uh, to do a network entry or to do an attach. In NSA, in 5G NSA, we don't need this because in 5G NSA, the LTE tells the UE all about the information to attach, as I explained already in the uh, my call flow uh, lecture before. So, in, but in standalone, we need SIV1 because uh, there is no LTE connection. The UE is only connected to 5G. And in that case, all the information that it needs to connect needs to come from 5G. So it uh, over here, it moves, it reads the SSB. SSB gives MIB. MIB tells you where the SIB1 is. So as you can see in the drive test log file, we go to the SIB1, which is the next message, this one. Okay, so the SIB1, when we go to SIB1, this is the information we can get from there. Now, what is this? The QRX level min, minus 64. Now, what does that mean? This minus 64 actually has to be multiplied by 2. So, minus 64 means minus 128. It means that uh, a UE is allowed to access this cell if the RSRP of the UE is above minus 128. So, if we go back over there, how where does the RSRP come from? This yellow signal, which is the SSS, the UE measures its power to find out the RSRP. So from the SSS, the UE gets the RSRP, and from the SIV1, the UE gets the QRX level min. If uh, the value of RSRP is above QRX level min, which is in this case minus 128 dBm, so if RSRP is let's say minus uh, 100 which is above minus 128 dBm, the UE will think that this cell uh, is a valid cell for me to access. Okay, so what else we get? Let's have a look. So other than that, we also get the PLMN identity, which is the operator's identity. So this means that uh, this shows the UE that uh, this operator is the operator that it should connect to, for instance. So we also get that from SIV1. Uh, more importantly, we get other system information so that is SIP type 2, SIP type 5, we get information about them and their periodicity and their uh, where to find them for instance. After that, the next important thing is we need to know the bandwidth, right? So we get this offset 2.a and we get the carried bandwidth. Now, how does this work? Let me show you again. So from here, we get these two values. Offset to point A is actually the amount of uh, RBs or resource blocks from SSB to the bottom edge of the channel. And the carrier bandwidth is the total carrier bandwidth. So when the, the UE already knows where the SSB is, offset to point A tells the UE that from here till here, how much, uh, how much uh, RBs are there. So basically it tells you the lower edge of the bandwidth. And then the carried bandwidth tells you from here up till here. So this way, the UE finds out the total bandwidth of the channel, right? So this is why SIV1 is also very important from that perspective as well. Other than that, we can also get uh, some other other things that we will uh, discuss in detail in RRC as well. But we uh, we also get uh, tracking area code from here. We get uh, random access information, RAC configuration as well. So all of that, uh, but I've discussed that already uh, in my call flow lecture, which is similar to that. So you can find that over there as well. Now, once we have done that, the UE can do a random access. And after random access, it will send an RRC setup request. Now in RRC setup request, we have a TIMSI. If you want to, uh, um, let's say, find the UE in your call traces or um, find to identify a UE, you can use the TIMSI value, which is uh, mostly unique for a session. Um, and it has uh, um, a unique, it actually, it's actually is unique for some time as well. Other than that, we also get the establishment cause. Now here it says MO data. What does that mean? It means mobile originating data. Now, when the cause is MO data, that means the UE needs to send some data. For instance, if the UE wants to send a WhatsApp message, in that case, the cause will be MO data. Now, what happens if the UE is the receiving a message? So someone else send a message to the UE and UE is gonna receive it. In that case, the, the UE will get a paging message first and then it will try to attempt to uh, connect to the network in that case uh, this cause will be empty access mobile terminating access so uh, 
with the aspect of with the respect of establishment cause we can also find out uh, what kind of service it is for instance so with this one uh, that's how we can uh, help out here as well now after this we have the RRC setup now in RRC setup is for once a GNODB receives the RRC connection request it sends RRC setup which carries the configuration of the uh, GNODB site so some of the important configuration that the UE needs to set up the, the, uh, the channel and in this way we are using SRB1 now what is SRB1 it is signaling radio bearer so with RRC setup we actually set up the SRB1 and the SRB1 then we have all the all the RLC layer information over here so for instance here RLC config AM which means acknowledged mode we also have all the RLC information like how many retransmissions will be there what will be the pole PDU uh, what will be the pole retransmission PDU and things like that so once we go through that we have the scheduling request what is the scheduling request it after the UE connects to the network and it needs to send some data every time it does not need to do RATCH for instance it can just send a scheduling request to the to the GNODB telling that the GNODB that I have some data to send similarly we have BSR this BSR is the buffer status report so it this way the UE can tell the the GNODB how much data is there in the UE's buffer then we have PHR power headroom report which tells the, the GNODB the how much uh, power the UE can use to transmit. So for instance, the UE is in bad radio conditions, it will have a, a lower power headroom. That means it does not have that much power left. If a UE is in good radio condition, it will have a higher power headroom. So that means it has more power to transmit. In that way, the GNODB will find out which UE can have more throughput and which UE can have lesser throughput, for instance. So this is how it works out. Then we have the RLF timers. You must have heard about that T310, N310, and N311. So these are the RLF timers. I've already discussed them before in my lectures as well. So they are here as well in RRC setup. Um, after that, important things we have. Uh, okay, so uh, these, okay, we'll discuss them as well later. Okay, the PDSCH configuration. Okay, so we also have this PDSCH configuration, uh, which carries a uh, um, our DMRS configuration as well and it also carries our PDCCH configuration as well here if you look at the PDCCH config we have that as well now uh, let's have a look at the PDCCH config how, how we find this out so over here we have monitoring slot periodicity and offset which means SL1 which means slot 1 so if you go back over there uh, this RRC message tells you for the PDCCH that the PDCCH will be uh, in every slot because it says its periodicity is, is one slot. So orange is the PDCCH over here. You can see that is in this slot, in next slot as well, in next slot as well, in the next slot as well. So it, this shows that the periodicity of the PDCCH is one slot. So it will be present in every slot. Now the need, so UE needs to find out uh, which symbol it should be on, right? Whether it will be one symbol, two symbol, three symbol or whatever. So in that case, over here we have monitoring symbols within the slot so if you see over here we have uh, 14 symbols in the slot if you look here we have 1 to 14 symbols in the slot and it's only the first one is 1 so this indicates that the UE uh, will only have look at the first symbol that will carry the PDCCH so this way we understand the PDCCH as well and uh, similarly we also have aggregation layers which aggregation layers the UE uh, this channel supports for instance and also the DCI formats and uh, consequently uh, there is also the DMRS position so this uh, DMRS where they will be and what will be their configuration that is also uh, found in the RRC setup message here. So uh, that is more or less what we get from the RRC setup and we also get some PUCCH and uh, how, where the PUCCH is allocated. So after that the UE uh, uses the RRC setup message to configure it with all the parameters and then it sends RRC setup complete message uh, which carries uh, which actually tells the GNODB that uh, all the configuration that the GNODB sent has been configured and the RRC setup complete message can also uh, contain any NAS message for instance if there's an attach request that's a NAS message there's a tracking area update request that is a NAS message that carries is carried inside the RRC setup complete now after that what we have is that uh, 
the G node B sends security mode complete, right? So that is the use for integrity and ciphering algorithm. That, that is pretty common. Um, and then we have RRC connection reconfiguration. Now this is where uh, the RAB is set up, the PDU session is set up. So <coughs> Uh, over here, what it carries is that uh, we have the signaling radio bearer 2, SRB2, and we have the DRB. What is DRB? DRB is the data radio bearer. So it has information about the data radio bearer as well around this point. Now, once we have configured that, uh, then that means after this, we can actually carry uh, data over the air. So uh, if you are looking at the, uh, for instance, attach point, so from RRC connection request, to uh, over here, the RRC reconfiguration where the DRB is set up, you can say this is the point where more or less we have attached. If we have NAS messages in there, then there will be a DL information transfer, and you can also you might also see the attached messages, the PDU session connectivity messages. So then it's easier, but we do not have them here. So at the, this point, we are only looking at the NR RRC messages. So you can see that around 100, 150 milliseconds in total uh, has. Uh, to set up the whole configuration. Now, uh, after this, what we have is the next RRC configuration message, which will carry uh, your mobility configuration, for instance. So, if you look at this RRC connection reconfiguration, this actually carries your mobility configuration. So, in this one, you can see the event A3. Now, A3 has RSRP2 and hysteresis 2, which means that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. And because it is a uh, actual event is 0 0.5, so 4 means 2 dB. So what it means is that if the neighbor is 2 dB better, the handover A3 will happen. I've also explained that in the mobility part as well uh, in another lecture, so you might be able to uh, get that information from there as well. It also says RS type, so it means SSB. This, this is means that RSRP that it needs to find out will come from the SSB. And this is the uh, SSS that we, that we already talked about. After that, uh, we can also see that there's another one which is A2. Now, A2 threshold is there as well in this RRC reconfiguration, which says 51. Now, 51 in NR, when you say 51, the corresponding value will be 51 minus 156. So, that, that should be around minus 105, right? So, the value of A2 will be minus 105. In this case, plus hysteresis, 2 again means 1. So, that will make it minus 106. So, this is how this works. It also has a time to trigger, which is 320 milliseconds. So if the UE uh, is below minus 106 for 320 milliseconds, then A2 will be triggered. And the RSRP use is also uh, from coming from the SSB. So this is how uh, more or less it works and uh, uh, how we can actually find out uh, each um, mobility event. Now, uh, overall, this is how the tool looks like. This is how uh, the signaling process looks like. I just wanted to give you um, a flavor of how we can use uh, a real post-processing tool to go through the signaling analysis. Now, what we will do next time is that we will use this tool, we'll explore it further, we'll use this tool to find actual throughput issues and then we'll look at different um, things from the tool to find out what is the root cause and how we can uh, come to a decision of to optimize or uh, to have a workaround to improve that uh, bottleneck. So that will be the next part. Uh, I hope you like this one. Have a nice day. Uh, stay tuned and share this with your colleagues. That will be a great thing. Thank you. Bye-bye.